so I've got about four stories for you tonight. A major update we can expect for Beat Saber in coming music packs. When we can expect upcoming launch information about the Vive Cosmos. Phil Spencer's thoughts on the Epic Game Store, Steam, as well as the Xbox Game Pass. And finally, another sale that the Epic Game Store is having. At E3, the composer of the earliest music packs, as well as the CEO of Beat Games, Jaroslav Beck, spoke about the possibility of adding a very major update either to existing music tracks or future music tracks. And that is the possibility of making the tracks either 360 degree or 180. While he specifically mentioned that it would be possible to make the quest option possible for 360 degree turning, that is hitting notes behind you, they specifically mentioned that it would not be possible for either the PlayStation VR or some PC VR models. That being said, he did he did bring up the possibility of making those ones 180 degree turning. So you would either turn to the left and hit hit all the notes, or you would turn to the right and hit all the notes that way. Either way, it would be a very big way to add a little bit more playability and a few more options to those songs, making them a bit more difficult for those of you who, well, you may have already passed the, the threshold for Expert Plus at this point. And hopefully, you'll be able to practice a little bit more. This next story is short, sweet, and to the point. HTC is going to be giving us all of their launch details about the Vive Cosmos next week, including price and launch date. So keep an eye out for that. A couple days after their E3 press briefing, Microsoft boss Phil Spencer gave an interview with PC Gamer Magazine. The whole thing is about two pages long and there's quite a few questions that, well, they matter, but at the same time they don't. So I'm gonna give you the ones that I believe matter and I'll include the link to the original article in the description down below. So you can read through it in all of its lengthy glory. First off, what is the purpose of Game Pass on PC? To which he replies, distributing our games to as many people as possible. Next question, what's your relationship with Steam? It's a good one. We both want to thrive and we both want to make sure that we work well together. Are multiplayer focused games like Forza Horizon Horizon and Sea of Thieves difficult to port? Short answer, no. We're working with Valve around the multiplayer systems to establish a better connectivity between our players. They've been easy to work with to enhance portability, and specifically we focus on Steam because not only are they the biggest, but they're the easiest to work with. What do you think about Epic Games exclusivity deals? They're, to which he replies, they're doing what they think is best for the players, although we are taking a different approach. Let's see. Do you think you're done acquiring new studios? To which he replies, it's not about checking a box necessarily, but rather ensuring we have a great team behind us. And perhaps the most startling question and easily the most effective one is how will the Xbox Game Pass affect the landscape of the traditional $60 game? Comes down to, to which he replies, it comes down to two different things. First, how are developers going to be able to bring something new to the table? And the other part is, well, the games on Game Pass seem to sell better than those that aren't. Meaning that those customers who are not able to get the games will be able to hear word of mouth and customer reviews a little easier from those that already are subscribing to Game Pass. The next question he has, there are a lot of subscriber models being debuted this week. What do you think about it? To which he replies, there won't be a ton of successful gaming subscriptions, but I do think it'll consolidate down to a more manageable number for people over time. And the one of the final questions he touches on, 
You say the day of your E3 press briefing was a record day for Game Pass on PC. Were you happy with the results? To which Spencer replies, Yes, it shows quite the vote of confidence from the PC gaming community. We wanted to bring value to the redesign of the Xbox app. Although I realize that not all PC gamers are going to use it, we believe we need to and should be a constructive part of the PC gamer's lifestyle. While this early adoption model has proven that the early, re early results, even in the first 24 hours, have really been great. So, all of that speaks to a greater form of portability for all of their games. However, while he doesn't seem to think that... Well, although he has a... Sorry about that. Although he seems to have a distinct idea about what the Epic Game Store has as far as the exclusivity deals, well, in the end, I think the exclusivity deals themselves are bad for consumers, as it limits the options for those consumers to try to find their games, and they have to go searching for those games rather than just, well, picking and choosing and and going for just focusing on Steam or the, the Windows Store or the Xbox Store or uh, heck, even EA Access. So it it all just kind of, well, it, it shorts you out a little bit. So hopefully that kind of sums it up a little bit. Like I said, the link to the full interview you can find in the description down below. And this last story of the night is all about a yet another sale that we can expect out of the Epic Game Store. Although the mega sale ended back on the 13th, we can expect free games to be released every single week throughout 2019. This week through the 20th, it's going to be Enter the Gungeon, and next week it'll be Rebel Galaxy. It's, it's only going to require a free Epic Store account in order to access these games. And not only that, but as soon as they're added to your library, they will be yours to keep. Regardless of any other changes you may have over the coming months, years, whatever. If you guys are still here, don't forget to check out my next video when I'll be going over some developers' opinions on which one's stronger, the Project Scarlet or the PlayStation 5. If you liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible human being for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.